Welcome back to Real Time Vlogs. No more LA trip. The last video, the third video, should have just been uploaded. And now, I'm making a little video to update you guys on what my life has been like. Well, as you can see, got a little Airbnb and we're having like a little joint family birthday. I have four members of my family and all of our birthdays lay within like pretty much a month. Yeah, we're celebrating here. I'm really dehydrated because we've been like drinking and stuff and I'm just not used to that. But oh, I feel so dead, dude. We got one more day here, and then we're leaving tomorrow. We gotta gym it up for sure, because I've just been rusting and eating like garbage. But um, yeah, time to enjoy this beautiful landscape and probably work on some stuff up there for that little thing that I've been working on that I cannot tell you guys about. One little hint, the name of it. Imagine there's mountains back there. That's all I'm gonna say, all right? That's all I'm gonna say. It relates somewhat to that, but um, yeah. Welcome back to another video. One really important thing to say. Is indeed not the next workout. Um, it's been a few days. I've been up to some stuff and I've actually got a few interesting things in the mail that I'll show you guys later to prove that I've been on my grind and I'm not slacking. So we have a little bit of water, creatine and pump product in here. We have to mix in some amazing Hyde Nightmare, AKA I needed to go to Walmart for pre-workout because I ran out of it. But yeah, I'm gonna show you guys how to grow massive shoulders and this workout is actually gonna be exactly out of my program, but my workout program is the exact exercises that I've followed for, for like over two years. So if you are interested in exactly what I've done to get to this point, link in bio, and this is the exact workout here that I'm following today. I have some interesting topics that I wanna to talk about today. I don't want it to only be about the workout because that trip that I just got back from, the amount of people that I've met, not only you guys, but also other content creators, it almost opened up like a third eye and I was able to see into another dimension that I didn't even know existed on this planet really. Like the whole fitness realm has a whole nother layer to it. I'll talk about it later, but let's go to the gym. Let's drink this shit. Um, late night workout, it's 8.07. Let's hit the road. Hopefully we're the only ones there. See ya. All right, here we are. I'm warming up with a band. It's my new favorite thing. I used to not do this. I used to just like warm up with dumbbells essentially, but ever since I started using this band, Number one, my bench is up because I've kind of done this, like wrap it around my back and start pressing. I used to like only warm up with a bar and then like 135, but being able to warm up like this and really get that like movement in the muscles and get that, you know, rhythm ingrained in your mind with the pressing motion. Dude, I've been able to bench 220 for 13, no spotter. Cause I, you know, I probably could have done like 15 if I really pressed it. But to put that in perspective, like, before I started warming up with the band, I would do 25 for like eight reps on a good day. So like I've definitely made so much improvement with this band. I've just been, you know, putting it under the shoes, little little laterals over the head action, just warming up the shoulders because the one thing you do not want to destroy is your shoulders. It's like the number one joint in my opinion. Everything you do in your upper body, it really relies on the shoulders. So yeah, I've had a lot of scares in the shoulders and I do not intend on going out from a shoulder injury. So I've been warming up a fuck ton and yeah, we're gonna start lightweight on the shoulder machine. So let's go. All right, so I have my program here. As you can see, I don't provide rest times, which I think that's really key. Everyone has different rest periods and I want you to get a feel for how much time you need to recover. And I don't want your cardiovascular system slash recovery to limit how much you can push at, during the actual exercises because intensity is everything. And I think being able to set your own rest times is really crucial to getting the intensity right. So here we are. This is my, um, what I'm gonna use for the shoulder machine, shoulder press machine. Um, it's plate loaded. A lot of them are just like stacks that you put the pin in, but this one's perfectly in line with my body and it kind of like slants forward a little bit. So it's just really in line with the front delt. And I really like starting with these machines over dumbbells because number one, it limits your risk of injury. 
And number two, you can really just push yourself, especially with nobody to spot you. I do have a lot of dumbbell shoulder presses in this program too. I think the beauty of it is that there's just so many variations of each workout that accomplish the same thing. So you can mix and match. If you don't like the dumbbells, then there's plenty of like Smith machine or this machine presses that you can do in place of it. Warming up with this, just lightweight to start. So leading off of what I was talking about in the car, I met so many people there and I really realized that I have such an impact on people and I want to be a good role model almost. Not in necessarily the way that I act, but the messages that I convey to people. You know, for the longest time I thought that, oh, like I'm just a normal fucking dude. Why would I be in the position where I could give people advice? But the more that I think about it, like compared to other people that make fitness content, I actually kind of am in a good position to give advice because I've done the polar opposites of pretty much everything in life. Like I grew up in a rural town where I currently am and then I lived in the city for a while in college. I did pursue the traditional path and now I'm just in this weird self-employed fitness niche bubble where I've been blessed to be able to do this. You know, I was extremely skinny, just very unpopular kid in like middle school and stuff. You know, I've, I've lived through a lot of polar opposites in my time being alive, in my 21 years of being alive and actually tomorrow I'll be 22. So if you guys ask me about my age, 21 at the time of recording this video, so yeah. So if anybody has unbiased advice and opinions and stuff, I feel like it's me compared to most of the other fitness influencers out there. Let's slap some more weight on here, baby. I'm thinking 25. All in all, we're gonna be doing five sets, one warm up, one feeder. This is kind of the feeder set, so let's get into it, baby. Three working sets at the top, doable. <laughs> I think we can do more weight. As long as there's effort, the reps don't matter that much. I give general outlines in my guide, but you know, when it says 15 reps for this, you could do 10 as long as it's really intense. You know, it's not gonna vary that much. It's not gonna affect your workout that much. With all these workouts, I don't provide specific warm ups like that band. I infer that you guys should be doing your own, whatever works for you. So naturally, being able to live literally wherever I want now, I've been thinking a lot about where I'm going to live and make the content from. And I'm thinking there's two options. I rent some cheap place in America, in a certain city, not around here. Like I'm thinking like Washington State, like down in LA, if I can find a good deal on a place. And it really depends on the gym that I find because content's my job. I need to have a really good gym that I can record in, kind of like this where it's like empty at night and I'm not like disrupting people with my literal fucking massive tripod. Another thing that I'm kind of considering, it'd be difficult with starting a company and shipping physical products. That's a hint, I'm shipping physical products with my company. I have to order stuff before I fulfill stuff. So it is a big monetary investment. But um, I figured, you know, it's not very productive with that, but I could travel around, like around Southeast Asia like go to Thailand, live really cheap, check out that. I think that'd be sick for content. You know, we're in the golden age of being able to travel the world and see new experiences. If you don't take a hold of that and see all the cultures and different landscapes, you're really missing out. I'm not even talking about that from like a place of privilege. Like Southeast Asia, if you go there for like two months, it literally monetarily makes sense to move there from a place where the currency is stronger, like the US dollar. Like I'd probably save money moving there for like a month and a half, two months, even with a plane ticket and everything versus living here. So um, definitely consider that. See, that was only 12, and I'm not all sucked because I literally went to failure. I could not do another one. 
that's the number one most important factor when you're working out is the intensity. And I try to put that in my program in the introductory section. I try to really outline and stress that that's the most important part, but it's really one I ingrained in your guys' mind. Even if you don't have that program, which obviously you don't need it to make gains, it's just what I've done, but. The business is making and selling you guys physical goods that many of you guys probably already use at a highly discounted rate. Like I'm talking about much cheaper than literally any other supplier on the market that you could get it from. If you don't have an idea from that hint, I don't know what to tell you, but look out because my whole, my whole thing is about providing value, right? I wanna actually feel like I'm promoting something good. That's why I love working with Gymshark because their clothes are so cheap and they last forever. Um, it's not like overpriced like many of the other gym brands with influencers are, even if that's at a detriment to me um, because I don't end up making as much, I feel better about promoting it. But, uh, all right, I'm working with that too. that weight for sure. So topic number one I wanted to talk about was a direct comment from my last YouTube video. It was, I'll pop it up here, I forgot the username, but he said, Max, you never talk about girls. Why is that? Well, you know, I've had my fair share of girlfriends and relationship type things, mainly in high school and stuff. At least for me, it varies by individual, but I'd say this probably is applicable to about 50% of the people watching this. When you get in a relationship, you almost become complacent and are happy with your life, and you don't keep improving on yourself and your life situation. So that's why I try to avoid relationships. You know, you have to find someone that you really mesh with, and I think I'm so motivated in the like business content creation side of stuff, I need to find someone, at least right now, that also does it so they can hold me accountable, record me, I can record them, and it's just like a symbiotic relationship of two creators and you know, in a relationship. So I think that's the only way I'd have one right now. Obviously as I become more financially stable and like more set and satisfied with where I am in life, that will definitely change. Watch out if you're in a relationship right now, like really think, okay, is there any way that this could be a detriment to my lifestyle by actually having a relationship with this person? Or is it actually making myself become better and making myself and making me want to achieve the goals that I've always wanted to do. Because I feel like a lot of people just get in a relationship and give up on all their goals, dreams, and aspirations because there's some instinctual habit in humans to be like, okay, I found my partner, I can procreate, make kids, continue the bloodline, and I'm satisfied. I think that's like such an instinctual drive in us. We've only recently not had to do that because our lifespans were so short, just hundreds of years ago even. I'll shut the hell up, let's go. I'm not trying to just pound these out. I'm really feeling the contraction in the front deltoid, anterior gear delt. Really feeling that squeeze, but also not just hold up on the contraction. Shut the hell up and work out, you bastard, you fat bastard. Fuck. Oh my God. This is more difficult than I expected. Recently I've actually not been doing isolated shoulder exercises. I've just been doing like lateral raises after doing chest because I'm really focused on developing my chest. But that's a detriment to my shoulders. I've literally watched them like shrink in the mirror in real time, um, faster than paint drying on a wall. But we're fixing that. We're bringing back shoulder isolation exercises. I know a lot of you guys in the comments were asking for like shoulder workouts and stuff. I've really never even done them, but here we are, baby. Full walk through, full breakdown, talking it all. Last working set. And we're switching exercises. We gotta drop it. Holy shit. 
Let's do five more or something. Whew. Now I have programmed in drop sets in this program, but I missed out on the 15 for multiple sets, so I don't feel bad exerting more energy and doing a drop set at the end. That was my last working set, so it's acceptable. The program's very like tinkerable. You can do really whatever you want. I just provide an outline of a great workout that anybody could follow. It's meant to kind of be mutated as you progress and figure out what you like in the gym. All right, next up we have dumbbell lateral raise partials, four sets of 12. I love doing lateral raises really, really heavy. Um, don't worry, the shirt's gonna come off. We're having one feeder set, as you can see. So it's really three working sets. And I'm starting with 25s. I'm probably gonna try like 40s for the heavy sets. All right, we're wide angle now. What we're doing for these laterals, because they are heavy, I'm definitely sitting down to do them. And we're basically putting the dumbbells under our legs. It's gonna be very heavy weight. And you're just gonna do like, you know, halfway up, really contracted at the shoulder. I find that these work really well for developing just overall size in the medial height of the shoulder right here. And they're really underrated. Um, no flaring. You actually have most of the muscle activated at the bottom portion of the movement. So this is just a perfect mass gainer and really underrated. So let's grab some heavy weight here. 40s, three working sets. Fuck it, I'll take my shirt off. I'm wearing 10% off of all Gymshark with code Maxwell. These are the rest day joggers, size large. They're absolutely amazing. Under these, I have the Gymshark underwear. Of course, the five inch rival shorts under these. The shirt was the sports seamless and I cannot recommend them enough. All right, next up, two sets of 10, 10 each arm, single arm cable front raise. I'm actually gonna be doing double because this machine's broken and the tension on each cable are different and I like doing them at the same time. Um, again, you can make tweaks as you need to. I'm just gonna be using the stiff bar, relatively light, and just, I'm actually stand right by the cable so the force is kind of upright. All in the front delt, just sawing off the peen, sawing off the peen. All it is really. It's relatively light. Up the weight a little bit for this last one here. Bro, this flies all over. Fuck. All right, we're doing some extracurricular extra credit on those. We're doing a few more reps, but that's fine, it's light. So if I remember correctly, it's cable lateral raises. Yeah, four sets, 10 cable lateral raise, 10 sets each arm. So we're gonna be doing the same exact cable machine here. I'm gonna have a handle on it. We're just gonna be raising right up to the side, just like the dumbbells. But this is a little more isolated, a little more concentration. Where the heavy ones, it was more just mass building, just like spamming them. This shit's really, really concentrated. So we're kind of like hitting both aspects of lifting, right? We got the heavy shit in the start, and then we're finishing up with some concentration stuff. Let's move right into it, baby. She might as well. I'm kind of leaning out, giving myself more range of motion. All right. 10 on one side, 10 on the other side, let's go. And you know what, since this side's bigger, 
I'm actually gonna do a couple more on this side to just make up for it a little bit. Again, baby. So light that I don't even have to grab on this. I can just stand here, really concentrated. It's all about the contraction. It doesn't matter with the weight necessarily. At least in this one. Facing away from you guys. How's the ass sweat? One more set, then we got biceps. On my back days, I work my biceps so much that I don't even necessarily need to hit biceps in exterior exercises but I figured for this video, I might as well. And actually I spotted a arm blaster out front. So we're gonna slap that bad boy on and see what we look like wearing an arm blaster for the first time ever. All right, baby, last one. Let's get into it. Whew, working out's fun, you gotta remember. So in the program it says hammer cable curls but I overruled that, I vetoed that. I peeped this, I had to try it. Like, what do we grab here, 30? Um, the next exercise is the preacher curl. So this is kind of like two in one combo. Oh my God, dude, that blasts your arms like nothing else. Ooh. All right, let's run it back. Ugh. I just can't get enough, bro. It's just too fun. I love torturing myself. Last one. Oh. All right, for the sake of having tiny triceps. We'll do this. Full on arm day basically, but I'm still gonna clickbait it with shoulders. That's mainly what that was. Again, I don't wanna do too much of this. Mainly just for the pump, for pictures after this. The posing room. My triceps and biceps get fucked up super easily because I literally never hit them. So I'm trying to avoid not being able to do like chest in a few days. So I'm probably just gonna do one more of this. Then we're taking pictures, then we're out of here and hitting the hay and eating a little bit of food. I gotta turn that light on, it's motion sensor. Workout over. I rate it pretty good out of 10. I recommend you guys try it out again. That was off of my program. Everyone that has supported me through that, thank you guys so much and thank you guys for all the positive feedback.
Your new business card has arrived? Why would I, just a silly little influencer, quote unquote, need a business card? Like what? What is this gonna be for? Am I making something to save you guys money and provide something that is the highest quality product in the market? Shit, I don't know, don't ask me. So some of you guys might know that I actually went to college and I graduated this summer. Well, finally, something from the University of Minnesota came in the mail. So let's rip this baby open together and see what a diploma looks like. Three years of hard work was put into this. They better not fucking disappoint me, dude. I put a lot of work into this. Oh, dude, yes, this cardboard. I've always wanted one of these. Whoa. I spent way too much money for this piece of paper that I'll just hang on my wall and never use. That's crazy. Of course I had to use the fanciest font they could possibly find in like fontfinder.com, dude, look at this. Crazy, well, here it is, deal.